Hi students and parents of students, I want to take a moment right now and talk to you about grading in science class, specifically grading in a T-Pop science or a Tyson Poppleton science class here at Centennial High School. So let's go ahead and get started. To begin, I want to just introduce to you maybe what you might be familiar with. Now this is a typical grade book that you might see in a normal class where grades are divided up. You see here we have some quiz scores, a test score, and some homework assignment scores. Now, I don't do grading this way, despite the fact that maybe it might be one that you're used to, or students are used to, or parents are used to. Um, and I want to tell you in this lesson why specifically I've chose to grade differently and how it could be beneficial for the students individually. So let's go ahead and get started. So let me show you what a gradebook might look like in my class. Here you see that instead of seeing tests, you might see these target evidences. And instead of seeing individual assignments, you might see lab, a formal lab or some notebook check. And I want to talk to you, even though you may not understand this, a little bit about what's going on here. So first of all, let me talk about a little bit about the grading categories. I kind of think of grading in two major categories. One part of the category is what you know. How can you prove to me or what, what can you prove to me what you know in this class and what did you leave knowing? This is done by the assessments, either the tests or the quizzes that are done in this class. The second credit grading category is specifically what you did or the practice, the labs, the, the assignments that you did to, to be able to figure out what you knew. Now, in terms of weights, I really feel that showing me what you know is kind of a big part of the class and a big point of the class, where what you did or the practice involved behind that is kind of a smaller aspect of the class. So it's weighted a little bit less. So to explain to you exactly how I score, I want to talk to you about something specific, specifically a test score. So normally you might see a score like this, a C minus. Now this could be a test score, could be a quiz score, could be an assignment score. But really, what does this even mean? What does this tell you? Well, I want to propose to you that a C minus doesn't really tell you much in terms of usefulness or helpfulness in the class. So I like to cross out those type of scores and I like to give you something a little bit better. Now imagine instead of getting a C minus on a test, what if this person or you got three scores? Here's score number one. You got a nine out of 10 in determining the number of protons in an atom. You got a nine out of 10 in determining the number of electrons in an atom. And you got a three out of 10 in determining the number of neutrons in an atom. Now to me, I feel like this type of scoring is a lot more useful, and it is. I mean, this person did really well on two parts of this test. It was the third part that they really bombed that brought their grade down. So this is the way I score. So on the left, you see the old method, and on the right, you see the new method. What I've done is I've taken the tests and the quiz scores, and I've broken them apart and really divided them up into just the target evidences that they are trying to show. So one test or one quiz may have multiple targets, most multiple evidences shown in them. And what I've done is I've divided those scores up into just the targeted evidences. So it doesn't really matter how many quiz or tests you take. What really matters is by the end, how well do you do on this learning target? Or how well do you do on this learning target? Or how well do you do on that learning target? So this is what you know and a big part of your grade. Another part of your grade is how you get to know what you know. So here we have our homework assignments in a normal class. And really what I've done is just combine those into simple notebook checks. Show me and prove to me that you've actually done some practice. This is what you did. And it's worth a smaller portion of your grade. It's kind of like in a sports, in, in, in when playing sports or doing games, you have each day you do practice. This is like your practice. You're not really scored heavily on your practice, though you are critiqued and you are, you know, trying to improve. Where the score really is, is on your final assessment or during the actual game. So how do you improve? This is really the question students and parents ask. How do I get a better score? What do I do to improve my grade? Well, if your grade is divided up into these different target evidences, the great thing is, is you only really need to focus on the evidence that you're failing or the evidence that you're not doing so well on. So instead of having to retake an entire test to get an A, all the student needs to do is improve the learning assessments or the learning targets that they're doing poorly on. And that's something we can work through. How do you do that? Well, there's kind of a two-step process. Number one, you need to make a goal for improvement. And I have a form that a student is willing to work out. They need to tell me which targets they need to improve on, as well as the goal, when and how they're going to improve on them. And then secondly, they need to produce some type of physical evidence to show that there has been improvement. And we can work on this. 
can you get help in this? Absolutely, that's my job. That's what I'm here to help you do, is to improve in those areas. So going back, one thing you can look at that's definitely really useful is Schoology. So I've outlined Schoology, and it's outlined in the very similar way the target evidences are outlined. These codes really do mean something. So if a student needs to improve on target evidence 1.3, in Schoology there's lots of resources in the 1.3 folder to help the student be able to figure it out. Well, number one, you can see here that there's practice problems and a lab assignment specifically for this uh, learning target. Now these are the ones we've done in class. So that student can go back and look at those practice problems that we did in class, as well as the lab that we did in class to see exactly what was going on there, maybe to find some of those misconceptions. Also in Schoology is the resources folder. Each of the different learning targets has a resource folder full of more practice assignments, reading from the textbook, simulations, maybe videos, a lot of different things that can help the student learn more or learn better the content that they did know. Of course, I'm here to help as well and here to help guide them when they need it. So their learning target evidence 1.1 goes with unit folder 1.1, target evidence 1.2 goes with learning target 1.2 in Schoology, target evidence 1.3, so on and so forth. Those codes are really important. Now the reason I'm doing this and the reason I've kind of changed up grading to be more of a standards-based approach is because I'm really focusing on student self-advocacy. When students self-advocate for their work, they do better. When students take control of their learning, they do a lot better. And that's really the ultimate goal. We want students to self-advocate to be able to know when to ask for help, to seek help, to be able to have help, and I'm trying to provide as much as that as possible. Of course, you're welcome to email me at any time to ask questions. Uh, you're welcome to make up appointments to meet with me, to have some tutoring sessions, to check Schoology. There's lots of ways for students to self-advocate. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you understand a little bit more about how grading is done in the class. There's always room for improvement, and there's always ways to improve. Good luck.